everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this time we're going to do something a little different. This time I'm going to review a piece of G.I. Joe fan fiction. Now I know what you're thinking, fan fiction has a reputation for being pretty terrible and sometimes creepy. And then Flynn put his hand on the round jiggliness of her boobie. But this is not like that at all. This is good fan fiction if ever there was such a thing. If you've been around the G.I. Joe community for very long, you're probably aware of Justin Bell. He's a great contributor to the Joe community. He runs the GeneralsJoes.com website. Uh, and he's a co-host on the G.I. Joe podcast, What's on Joe Mind. He also wrote a three-book G.I. Joe series called The Price of Peace that was available on Kindle Worlds, which I have read and enjoyed. You may also be aware that at the G.I. Joe convention, JoeCon, this year uh, in Springfield, Illinois, Hasbro announced a new set of G.I. Joe toys that will be coming out this year. The new toys include some classic vehicles that have been recolored and repurposed, along with some new action figures and one new character that Hasbro gave a file name of Gary Goggles uh, in tribute to the late Gary Head. The new G.I. Joe lineup coming out inspired Mr. Bell to write a new G.I. Joe novella titled Welcome to Wolf Squad. I'm going to try not to give away any spoilers, but just to set up the story, Cobra has obtained G.I. Joe technology, and now the Joes have to stop Cobra from developing these new weapons. Weapons. The opening scene has a bit of a James Bond feel that's very tense and exciting with a little bit of cloak and dagger. After that initial setup, the story moves to an environment that will bring all of these new toys into play. No pun intended. Within the story, the writer works in all the new G.I. Joe products, so we get to see a lot of familiar faces, some old favorites like Bazooka and Dusty. We even get to see a couple of the original Green 13, Steeler and Grunt. And Chuckles really shines through as an important character in this story. Amidst all these familiar names is the new character, codenamed Sightline, file name Gary Goggles. And for what I assume is the first time this character has ever been represented in any G.I. Joe media, uh, the character is remarkably well-rounded and developed. There also seems to be a bit of biography here, as it looks like Mr. Bell has added his own tribute to the late Gary Head. The story wisely focuses on the action, which is exactly what it should do for a story this length. It's not very long. So for a short novella like this, it could become very cumbersome if it were plot-heavy, uh, but it's not excessively plotty, uh, it really does drive home the action. What this means is the story is exciting pretty much from beginning to end. Uh, there is some proper pacing so we do get some breaks so the action doesn't exhaust the reader. But I can guarantee that as you read this story you will not be bored. Are there any knocks I have on this story? Well a couple minor ones. There is one character that shows up rather abruptly and then also leaves rather abruptly. Kind of feels like he was shoehorned in. There's also this character of Luis Chavez who's very important to the story in that he kind of gets the adventure rolling. But it's a continuation of a very long trend in G.I. Joe media in which anyone who is in the intelligence services, uh, anyone who works behind a desk, and essentially anyone who's not a combat sh soldier kind of gets short shrift. They're often treated as backstabbing cowards and that happened many times in the G.I. Joe comic book series. I always thought this was unfair because there are a lot of good people in those services who work very hard defending this country and in the G.I. Joe comic book they're always treated as the bad guys. Also it helps a lot if you're already a G.I. Joe fan and are familiar with these characters. If you're a non-fan reading this story you might be a little little bit curious who these people are and why they're significant, but if you already are a fan and you know the G.I. Joe characters, I think you'll get a lot out of it. But those are very minor issues in what is otherwise a very great story. If you're a G.I. Joe fan, I can't recommend this enough. This is the best kind of fan fiction. Uh, I think anyone who understands the history of G.I. Joe and anyone who is a fan as a kid is going to love this. It's also a great promotion for the new toys, even though I only collect 
collect vintage G.I. Joes, I don't get the new stuff. After reading this, I kind of want to get some of the new stuff. It's only $1.99 on Amazon. You can download it on your Kindle, which is what I recommend you do right now. And after you've had a chance to read it, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon with another vintage G.I. Joe review.